Welcome to the kitchen. It's Thursday and we are going to not just be in a peach dress, but joining with me will be top chefs Gregory Gordet. Um, he is a chef that has got a new cookbook coming out in the spring and we're going to be not only talking to him, but making an omelet. And it's not just any omelet. It's special. It's Gregory. <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to having him lead me through this because I love a good omelet, but I'm going to tell you, I'm no expert. Oh, <laughs> I saw somebody. I was like, wait, that's not Gregory. <laughs> hey, how's it going? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing great. You look great. I love your dress. Thank you. I thought, well, he looks very different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually at the beach. I rented a little house for a few days, so I'm just relaxing a little bit. So I'm excited oh. to be here today. How nice. Well, thank you for letting us interrupt and thanks for joining the kitchen here. Um, we, we know you from Top Chef. We know you as um, a semifinalist for James Beard. There's so much that we know you from, but today we're going to know you from an omelet and it's a crispy omelet, crispy yeah. edged omelet. Is that how yeah. you say it? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to lead me through, but first, can we just start with how you doing? Obviously being at the beach, you must be okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been in Portland, you know, on lockdown ever since this whole started. Uh, I was actually working on, a, I've been working on a cookbook, actually, and mm -hmm. I'm almost done with that project. So I was at home already, kind of just working. So uh, we went into phase one last week. So uh, opening up travel a little bit in our city and our state. So I'm out here just kind of enjoying and relaxing a little bit and getting a little bit of fresh air while there's still a lot of craziness and um, unsettledness in the world. But just yeah. to find a little bit of joy and gratitude today out here on the beach and relaxing for a little bit and that's the thing this this uh, cooking has been one of those places where I have found such joy during all this and it really does it's something we have to do because we have to eat so we may as well have a great time doing it yeah. And, yeah. and we might yeah. as well learn some of your techniques which we're going to get into today but sure. I do want to talk quick about the, the cookbooks coming out in spring 2021 and it's focused on healthy eating right it is it is this is actually uh part of the recipe inspired from from the book uh, it focuses on the top 100 superfoods. It's gluten-free, it's dairy-free, it's uh, refined sugar-free, it's soy-free. Uh, but more importantly, what is not in it is, uh, more importantly, it's about what's in it. And it's just about creating seasonal recipes that are really superfood focused. You know, they go from easy things that you can assemble in a couple of minutes during like, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday to more elaborate projects that, you know, you might need to shop for for a few ingredients to make on Saturday or mm -hmm. Sunday. Um, but generally, you know, just great meals that anyone in the family can enjoy. They're all super healthy, made from the best ingredients that Mother Nature makes. Um, and they're all a lot of loud allergen friendly. So if you have someone who's vegan in your family or someone mm -hmm. who's free, you all can eat the same thing together. And nice. you enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, that we have a lot of that around here, a lot of different preferences and choices and dietary things. So I always appreciate that. Um, before we get started cooking, too, you you have cooked mostly and a lot of your influences from your Haitian roots, right? And so that was kind of the, the essence of, of a restaurant that you hope to open. And I know that we wanted to talk about that for a moment. Absolutely. So yeah, so I, I've been inspired by a lot of different cultures throughout my career. You know, I started my career at Jean Georges, and mm -hmm. that was a modern French restaurant. And he started his career in Asia. So there's a lot of Asian influences. Uh, I've actually studied a lot of Asian, I've cooked a lot of Asian. You know, the restaurant I currently uh, currently direct, Departure in Portland, is an Asian inspired restaurant. But okay. that, you know, I was, I've had a very strong Haitian heritage. My family came here from Haiti in the late 60s to pursue education. And I grew up in a very Haitian household. And going back to my culture uh, is something that's really important to me. So I'm excited to dive more more into my culinary background and my cultural background. And um, I'm planning on opening up a restaurant next year with a very, very strong Haitian focus. So that's been nice. exciting to explore for me over the past few years and for, indeed. Well, that's something for us to look forward to. Okay, so I so far have cracked eight eggs in a bowl and that's all I got. So where are we are you going? Good? You're good. <laughs> okay, I've, uh, I've done a few things. So okay. uh, uh, cut, did you cut, uh, are you doing a tomato salad today? Yeah, I've got. I don't have an avocado. I know you added avocado, but okay. I didn't have it's that. Okay, it's all good. It's all good. So let's let's cut the tomatoes. Okay. Um, Do you have a preference of how? Is it just halved? Yeah, just just in half. Okay. I, I got my cutter ready. I cheated. That's all right. That I usually do. Yesterday I did one of these, and I had done everything. And today I'm the 
I'm okay. lagging behind. I've been working on like six other projects and I was like, I got, but this is my favorite part of the day. This is when I get to cook. Yeah. How did you tell me while I cut my tomatoes? Like what's a, what's a first memory for you in the kitchen? Um, honestly, like I didn't grow up cooking, but I grew up surrounded by a lot of amazing Haitian women because mm -hmm. our parents worked all the time. So, um, but also, you know, during that time, a lot of our cousins and relatives would come to America you know, our, our younger cousins would come here and, and transition into living here. Um, so we had like aunts and grandmothers look out for us throughout parts of the year. So I just always grew up with like lots of pots like simmering and lots of Haitian cuisine just kind of waiting for me already. So I think one of the first things I personally cooked, I tried to bake a cake with my sister. Um, mm -hmm. It was like a Betty Crocker cake mix. And it was so bad that we went and we buried no. it like, under a tree <laughs> yeah. like, around the block. It was so you funny. put the cake you put the cake to rest. Huh? <laughs> Literally. I don't know. I it was just really bad. It was like a chocolate chip cake. It was How bad. did you mess that up? I don't know. I think we just kind of just threw one stuff together, uh, added a couple eggs and just like hope for the best and it just did not work out. So, and there was um, a there was a lesson for everyone is even yeah, when you have yeah. an experience like that, you can still become a top chef. <laughs> you know, I actually consider myself quite a late bloomer because I didn't actually start cooking until I was feeding myself in college in ah. Montana and I was already in my, you know, early twenties at that time. So uh, I did not grow up cooking whatsoever. So um, yes, you can you can kind of decide what you want to do with yourself in life a little bit later, and things can work out. So, so what um, did you think? What did you think you were going to do if you weren't going to be a I, chef I, before? Yeah, so I, my parents both worked in hospitals. My mom's a chem. Uh, my mom's a microbiologist. My dad's a chemist. So mm -hmm. uh, I just always grew up thinking I was going to be a doctor. I was going to be a pediatrician. But one year of pre med uh, <laughs> kind of squashed those dreams pretty quickly. <laughs> you were like, <laughs> realized, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I realized I'm probably more of a, a creative type than a scientific type. Although there's a lot of science and cooking. Um, there is a lot of science and look, cooking. Yeah. Um, okay, so, I've got tomatoes now. Now what? Okay, okay so I'm going to add a uh, shallot, a little bit of sliced shallot. Okay. And and you can add a little bit of sliced jalapeno as well. Okay, I'm doing both. Yeah. And with a shallot, is there like, I always wonder this, but, and I always see them, is there like a better one to pick out? Because, the, you know, like this one was doubled up and it had, it's got like the little part and then the big part. Is there oh, yeah, like that's, a, a that's way? That's totally fine. When you want to pick a shallot, you want, if you squeeze it, you should be able to feel, it should be firm. Because, firm. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of plumper. If you feel it and you feel kind of, you can squish it a little bit, that means it's kind of drying up a little bit. And, okay. Um, it won't be as fresh and, and tasty. And you want the shallot pretty fine? Yeah, you can slice it nice and thin. Um, it doesn't have to be too crazily thin because we're okay. going to marinate everything. I was hoping that my, we just started this little garden, me and the kids, and I was hoping that I would have the tomatoes from there, but they're just a couple of days out from being fully ripe. Ah, okay. I was well, like, darn. <laughs> you make it again in a couple of days. Yes. That's the thing. When these are good they go right into my rotation and I get very excited that I have things that I can do by heart. So oh, this, awesome. this has been, these virtual cook clubs for me have been really helpful and hopefully for everybody else. The nice part too is Instagram's got this thing now. If you go bottom left, everybody, there's a question mark. And if we have lulls and I'm not way behind like this, I'll be able to get the questions out to you, which is nice. So if you have a question for Gregory, you want to use his expertise, you have him right here. Okay, shallots are in there. Okay, a little jalapeno? Yep. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to go and marinate and a little bit of rice wine vinegar. Okay. And that's how much and rice wine? About a fourth of a cup. Oh, you know what? I have about a question. Four rice four vinegar? Is rice yes. vinegar different than rice wine vinegar? Oh, no, it's the same thing. It's, okay. it's definitely the same thing. Yeah. So I'm doing about four tablespoons of each, about a fourth of a cup. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to start mixing everything together. Yeah, because I've got a couple of them here. Sodium-free, sugar-free. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I use tamari because I'm gluten-free. So uh, you can use tamari or you can use regular soy sauce. Um, if, you're, if you don't want to use soy, you can use coconut aminos, um, okay. which is the fermented sap of coconuts. And it doesn't taste like coconut. It's kind of salty. And it's a great replacement if you don't want to have soy. Okay. 
So wait, so I did the rice vinegar. What was the next step? The uh, soy. Rice vinegar, the soy, mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna do a little bit of salt. I'm using a little bit of sea salt today. Okay. And then you just give it a toss, and that's just gonna hang out while we make the eggs. Hold on, I gotta grab the soy. Yeah. I don't know how. I thought I had everything out. You know, it's like doing six things and then. Every time, every time it comes out with one of these where I'm like, no, nope, didn't prepare. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, here. There. We've all been there. So I'll get a little of the soy going. Make a huge mess as I always yeah. do. No, it looks great. Does looks that, great. does making a mess make me um, have promise as a cook? <laughs> the thing is we all make a mess. So okay. <laughs> it's okay to mess a mess as long as you clean up after yourself. That's the most yeah. important thing. On Top Chef, there's a whole crew that cleans up after us. And every time we have a challenge and go to a restaurant, yeah. I feel so bad for the chef because we really destroyed our kitchen. <laughs> um, but luckily, there's a great crew that helps us clean up after. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to just come in and use somebody's no. kitchen and leave it that way. Yeah. Okay. All right. So marinate this. Leave this to be. Yeah. So this, you can okay. just like, let it hang out. I like the combination of the soy. It's like salty. It has lots of umami. Yeah, it smells good. Depth. It's going to work with the jalapeno. The salt's going to soften up those shallots just a little bit so they're not so sharp. Um, okay. Just kind of make them nice and round. And that'll be a nice little salad. And of course, you know, as the season gets closer to like higher summer and, and all the tomatoes in your garden start growing, this yeah. will taste even better with even better tomatoes. Oh, yeah. So yeah. sweet. Like the little ones that have been ready. Well, that's the other problem is whenever they're ready, we eat them right away. Like yeah. straight from the garden, and I'm like, oh, I didn't get to put anything in there. We just don't have the volume yet for that. Yeah. Okay, good, set. Great. Tomato right. salad. All right. So next is egg, right? We go next omelet. Is egg. So okay. this is inspired by um, kind of a a Thai style omelet, but also um, in Haiti, the way we cook omelets is like a hot pan, a, a fairly decent amount of oil. And we get the pan nice and hot. So mm -hmm. you think about a traditional French omelet, you know, that's something that's really important in the culinary world to have like a perfectly white, excuse me, a perfectly yellow, perfectly smooth French omelet. This is completely different. Um, okay. We're going to cook a little bit. So I have a pan. Um, I'm going to just put it on high heat. Okay. Just then, like a regular nonstick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just yeah, a regular okay. nonstick. I think this is like an 11 inch pan. And I got my little burner set up. All right. And then, do you have a little bit of fish sauce? I do. Awesome. So I don't know so, where it went, but I do have it okay. somewhere. <laughs> so you can use somewhere. fish sauce. You, you, you can definitely use salt. Uh, but I have my eight eggs. They've been whipped up. Fish sauce. Got it. I knew I had it. All right. So how much fish yeah. sauce do I put it in now? It's like like a tablespoon and a half. Okay. You want a nice little jolt of salinity and flavor. Okay. And you want these eggs whipped already? Yes. Sorry, I hadn't done that. Oh, it's okay. Is there, is there something like, because this, this is an important step, no? Is it there is, like a temperature again, that they have to be or? Yeah, so I would, I would get my pan nice and hot while we're doing everything else because okay. you, you really want to get your pan nice and hot first. Okay. So fish sauce will act like an oil? Too? No, no, oh. it'll just season everything real good. Oh, okay. So it's smoking hot. Yeah, how's that? Good. Hey, Sushina. Yeah, you're great. Okay, cool. It's nice and hot. Um, okay. Um, are the eggs your eggs are ready? Yeah. Okay, great. So my pan is smoking hot, mm -hmm. which is great. I'm gonna lower my heat so it's a little bit more controlled. And we're gonna add some oil. Okay. You're using avocado oil? Yeah, I'm using avocado oil. Do you want to use an oil that? can get nice and hot. Okay. Because we're going to really crank this up. Now my oil is smoking. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm just going to add the egg. And Wait, why does my fish sauce look bubbly? Something wrong? Uh, <laughs> it, uh, you put the fish sauce in the pan? Yeah, I was not supposed to do that. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's, let's wipe it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to do, we're just going to do hot oil in the pan. Okay. Wipe out your pan, get it nice and hot, and then <laughs> and smoking, and then yes. add the oil. I was like, this is, does not seem right. <laughs> yeah, you want to put the fish sauce in the eggs. Listen, I'm just listening to the chef, you know, and I thought <laughs> I heard. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, no, this is me being a bad student, being like, I swear I heard that. I <laughs> okay. Wiped out. I'm going to add the 
<laughs> Make sure it's nice and dry. Yeah, it's dry. It's just got probably a little bit of the stickiness of the residue, but I bet It'll that's be okay. Fine. If it's nonstick, you'll be okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's get the pan smoking hot. Okay. I think it is. I think we're pretty close. Okay. And then let's get about a tablespoon and a half of oil nice and hot. Maybe two tablespoons of oil nice and hot. That's in there. Smoking hot. Okay. Because you want it to like sizzle, right? Yes. Yes. That's so funny. I always do something. Like, there's always got to be the one thing that's not quite right. Yeah, so it looks, lets you get nice and yeah, hot. Yeah, it's it's popping. It's okay, popping. Uh, let's 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 like keep it going just a little bit more. All right. Wow. Yeah, I want to get super hot. Yeah. While we do that, let's see. Is your heat on high? Yeah, it sure is. What is the name? What is the name of your book when it comes out? Do you have a name yeah, for it? Yeah, it's called Everyone's Table: Global Recipes for Modern Health. Nice. Yeah. Okay. How you feel? Ready? Um. Yeah. Like that's really smoking. Okay. Great. Okay. So we're just gonna dump the egg in. Okay. You can watch me. All right. And then the edges are starting to sizzle. Yeah. I got my. And then we're just gonna start pulling the edges in. With what? With a rubber <laughs> spatula. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I saw in the directions it was like at three o'clock, at nine yeah. o'clock. I was all. Very it's very detailed, but it's it's a little more casual than you think. Okay. You know, just, yeah, because this is how I make scrambled and eggs like, once in a while. Letting the egg run. Uh huh. And this is because see, this is how I would make the kids like sp scrambled eggs. So how? Yeah, okay. but we're we're gonna we're gonna let it be nice and flat. I'll just listen. So you, yeah, you want to <laughs> kind of have it be nice and flat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mine's looking like yours, pretty pretty close. Great. And then you just want to make sure that it's not too runny. Yeah, nobody likes that. Yeah. And I feel like mine needs like a little bit more oil. So and like the best part about this, it can be like weird shape. I'm just gonna put a little bit more oil. Where are you putting the oil? Around the edge. Oh, okay. Sure. Let's do it. And then let's see. Does yours try to move your yours around Whoa. the pan? Okay. Uh, <laughs> mine's not moving like, oh, wait, that side moved a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I think you're doing good. Okay. Yeah. Let me put this back. Take it up a little bit. Okay. This phone's getting in my way. Hold on. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, I, this is serious time now. I, I can't be messing around with the shot. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more oil around the edge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Looking good. So we're not gonna flip this? Yeah, we're gonna flip it. Oh. So does it does it move around when you shake your pan? I think yeah. you're good. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Perfect, perfect. Okay. And you might have do you feel good about the how much softness is this on top? Um just like a, I wouldn't want to eat that yet. No. Okay, so let's let's just give it another little second. Maybe okay. try to move the, the wet part off to the side a little bit. Yeah. Scoop it off to the side and cook a little bit. So it's not going to flip to cook the top half, though, right? No, no. So the thing yeah. about this, like... You, you want to contrast of the crispy bottom and the soft top. So uh -huh. I think you're looking pretty good, actually. Really? Yeah. It's like kind of like a runny egg. Just yeah, imagine, okay. You know, you know how yolks are runny anyway, so. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. I think we're good. Okay, good. So I'm going to take a plate. Uh-huh. It's going to get a little crazy. Wait, and what are you doing? <laughs> put a plate on top. Okay, but I'm turning it off now, right? Yeah, turn it off. Okay. Is this going <laughs> to crack the plate? No, no, no. You're good. You're good. All right. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. Oh, you're good? Okay. 
Okay. And now I'm going to grab the side of the pan and I'm mm -hmm. going to grab the plate. What? Okay. Make sure you have a nice thick towel. Yeah. And then I'm okay. just going to flip in midair. What? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see you do it. Okay. You flipped? Yeah. Oh. So okay. I'll, do, I'll do it again. So I have my plate. I got it. I got it. I put okay. my plate on top. Whew. I and did then it. We go. <laughs> nice. Okay. Take the pan off. And then you just take the pan off. Oh my goodness. It's an omelet. There you go. Come on over here. Come see and it. And then you have this beautiful omelet. It's crispy Look. and it's going to contrast a nice soft bottom. Yeah, you want to see? Look. Hold on. Come here. Oh. Can you say hi? Say hi, hi Chef. Hi, Chef. <laughs> That's my son, Adrian. He's come to, to check out what's going on. That looks very, that's really, really cool. Yeah, very cool. I'm going to go say, okay, have fun. Oh, all right, sweets. Okay, so now we can finish the tomato salad and we're almost ready. So okay. I'm tearing some basil. I have some basil. I'm just going to tear yes. it into the tomatoes. Where did I put my basil? Oh, there it is. Okay, tear it in there, yeah? Yeah. Great. And I, I have an avocado today, so I'm going to use it. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm envious, because that's the one thing I don't have. It's okay. It's about using what you have, you know? I mean, once you get the egg technique down, you can pretty much serve whatever you like. Okay, and then mix that basil in. And then, yeah. But put a little bit more. I love yeah. basil. I'll, you can hear the kids have now waking up from their woken up from their nap. Nice. <laughs> so it's just in time for snack time, huh? Yep. It's almost dinner. We're we eat so early. Oh, yeah. We're like yeah. we're on the senior special over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Yes, buddy, come here. Great. Come here, sweets. What's wrong? You want to go outside? Okay. After mommy makes this omelet and make an omelet, does it look good? No. No? Okay. Well, that's your <laughs> choice. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say hi? Can you blow a kiss? <laughs> the other one. Okay. I'll go outside with you in a minute, my love. <laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> And then I have some butter lettuce, and then that's it. I'm just going to top this off. Okay. Oh, on the butter lettuce. I didn't have the lettuce, but that's all right. I can just yeah. eat just the salad. Yeah, you can just eat the salad, just like that. Wait, you didn't season the um, omelet, did you? Just the fish sauce. So the fish sauce should have enough oh. salt in it. Yeah. But you can add a little more salt if you taste it and you feel like it needs a little something. But Yeah. The the goal is to have enough fish sauce in there to season it completely. Got it. All right, I'm going to do a couple of questions because I think we have you for two more minutes. Yeah, of course. And see if anybody has any. If you guys are just joining us, um, Chef Gregory Gorday has uh, the – we have a question mark on the bottom left, and you can ask him questions. Let's see. How long does this take to cook? This is fast. I mean, this was quick, right? What did we take, 20 minutes, not even? That was just because I messed up. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna just. Uh, there what you was go. your What was your favorite memory about Top Chef, or your favorite thing? Uh, I think just pushing myself so hard. You know, mm -hmm. Top Chef is it's not really it's a heavily produced, unrealistic environment, but mm -hmm. I think environment whatsoever because it's all about just cooking in a crazy situation with specific resources. So for mm -hmm. me, it's, it's such an amazing test of what we can do as chefs and what you know about food. And I always find that, you know, as much as I feel like I know about certain things, I, it always leaves me with a hunger to learn more because yeah. if you think about, I think about food in terms of culture, um, in terms of ingredients. And when you think about all the different cultures and all the different ingredients in the world, it's, it's truly endless. So I'm always inspired to learn more whenever I finish Top Chef. And someone asked, what was your favorite dish that you made on the show? 
My favorite dish, hmm. I don't know. I think I think probably part of the Haitian meal. I think two dishes: the salmon dish that I made for the first challenge because I love the Pacific Northwest and moving out to the Pacific Northwest has really changed my life. And I love American seafood and I love fruit. Mm -hmm. And they had mm -hmm. like a really spicy habanero dressing, and it was really some of my favorite. It's, it's how I love to eat: grilled fish, fruit, and a spicy dressing is like perfect for me. Uh, and then definitely parts of my Haitian meal for Restaurant Wars where I got to make Haitian food. Yeah. And, um, you know, that was really important and special to me for sure. And then someone is asking, how did you get into ultra running and do you find it sustainable? Uh, so I'll answer the second question. Sustainable, the answer is no. Oh. <laughs> because I haven't been running that far. But I started <laughs> just to kind of be able to get healthy and it was something that was free it was something that you know i can just like get out my door and run wherever i am in the world and moving yeah. to oregon where there's a lot of ultra runners i just started meeting some friends who are ultra runners and inspired me to push myself and you know i love to kind of push myself and achieve goals and it seemed like something so clear in terms of literally putting one foot in front of the other and literally just pushing yourself to go further and, you know, being an ultra runner uh, has really inspired me just to be able to organize things in my head and push myself and to keep going further. Hmm. Well, we hope that it keeps doing that because we love cooking with you and I have loved today. So thank you for doing this with us. Uh, of course, I of am course. going to post the recipe because people were asking. I'll post the recipe in the yeah. caption here yeah. eventually. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you and good luck thank and have so fun much. at the beach. Have fun yeah, tuning thank out. You. Thank you. Take All care. right. Take care. Bye. Bye.